Good afternoon. Uh, I really appreciate everyone coming today. And uh, for a lot of you, it's um, I haven't seen you for a few months, so it's good to see some f familiar faces. Um, I recognize it's getting warmer out here, but um, I know we're here to discuss our recent audit results. Uh, but if you'll indulge me, I just want to provide a little bit of historical context about our camera program, uh, how we get here, uh, and the total number of our cameras, and um, how that leads us to doing the audit and the results of that audit. So uh, in 2000, um, we think we're one of the first in the nation and certainly one of the first in the uh, Baltimore, Washington region to begin experimenting with NCAR cameras, which we immediately recognize is an incredibly valuable tool to help not only um, our officers in training scenarios, but provide transparency to our community. Uh, so in 2000, we begin uh, purchasing and installing some cameras. Sometime around 2004, we um, transitioned from a much older VHS-based system to uh, a DVD-based system, which is manufactured by Custom. Uh, that system has served us very well for a number of years, and probably in that 2004 time frame, every single new car we purchase, we also purchase a Custom camera for. So beginning in 2004, around there, every single car we buy also comes with a camera. Um, we continue to use the, uh, those DVD-based systems up until about 2010 when we transitioned to a newer technology, which is actually a hard drive-based recorder, and those systems that we purchased were manufactured by Panasonic. Uh, the original custom systems came with a three-year warranty. So obviously beginning in 2004 through the middle of uh, the 2000s and closing into 2009, those warranties began to expire. So around 2007, we began to purchase uh, annual contract, maintenance contracts through custom uh, to service those cameras that were falling out of warranty and experiencing some level of malfunction. Um, and we continue to do that all the way through uh, the most recent contract, which ended in May of 2015. So that leads me to the point where there, there came a point in time, and I can't give you the exact date or what contract it was, but not in the not too distant past, one of the contracts we signed, Custom said to us, we will continue to attempt to service these older DVD-based cameras to the best of our ability and repair the ones that we can. Uh, but uh, you have to acknowledge and accept that we no longer make parts for these cameras. So some of the cameras that experience some level of malfunction, we're not going to be able to um, repair. And so part of the reason that we found ourselves in that spot is because um, certainly in the early 2000s, there were um, definite challenges with the budget in Prince George's County. So we weren't replacing older cars with newer cars at quite the rate that we would have expected when we were doing a reg original bullet budget analysis. So um, as we closed into 2010, clearly there were cameras out on the road that were outside of the warranty, and now we were in a spot closing into 2013, 2014, where not all of those cameras that experience repairs would be repairable. So leading into um, early 2015, we recognized that this most recent contract was set to expire. Uh, it appeared that a number of units were failing, and we were not able to, or at least Custom was not able to repair them due to the parts issue. So uh, in no way do I want anyone here to take away that we are unhappy with Custom. Uh, they were a great contract provider for us. Um, it's just a ver uh, a, a f the fact that technology has moved on and obviously manufacturers aren't dealing with DVD-based systems. So um, we were very happy with them, but we were certainly in a spot where we did not necessarily want to spend good money after bad renewing a contract where we knew that wasn't going to get us um, compliant or get these cameras back in operation. So uh, in early 2015, the chief was aware of these issues. He asked the Internal Affairs Division to conduct a full audit across the entire MARC patrol fleet that had cameras installed to figure out exactly where we were and figure out the cost benefit of whether or not it made financial sense to extend the contract or figure out another solution. And that's really what led us here. And I know some of you have even asked me, uh, one of the things that highlighted the need to figure out the status of our fleet was the tragic death of Officer Rabain. Obviously, he was involved in a fatal collision. Uh, the investigation of that collision revealed that his in-car camera did not activate and record as it normally would have if, when he had activated his lights. So certainly that was a note um, in addition to the overriding fact, really the primary driver of this was, how many cameras do we have that we think cannot be repaired and is it worth the money to invest in another contract with custom for likely not being able to get those cameras repaired. So uh, at the end of April of this year, our Internal Affairs Division, we did complete that audit. We inspected 1,048 cruisers. Uh, 
about 70% of those cruisers we found to be fully, well, excuse me, the 70% of those cameras inside the cruisers were found to be fully functional, which obviously leaves us uh, with a shortfall of about 30% experiencing some level of malfunction. So when I say to you some level of malfunction, that's not an entirely binary works or doesn't work. Uh, the, the errors run the gamut of possible um, computer or hardware related malfunctions. So some of them don't power on, some of them power on but don't record or have recording errors. Some of them record but have audio related issues. Some of them otherwise record both audio and video but the internal playback system might have some sort of error. So there's a wide variety of errors uh, running across those about 300 cars that we identified with some level of malfunction inside the um, and related to the camera. So that leads us to today where the, the chief and our chief information officer here, uh, Mr. Alan Lee and I, we sat down and we were um, coming up with a plan as to how we can get back towards our internal self-imposed goal of 100% uh, of patrol-related officers, patrol-related cruisers having a, an operational camera. Because obviously, again, we recognize this is an incredibly valuable tool, provides transparency, not just for the department, but for our community. So um, basically our plan moving forward is probably about 100 of those cars are going to be replaced in this annual cycle. 2015's budget already incorporated some money to purchase 100 new Mark Cruisers. So about 100 of the cars that currently have cameras that aren't operational will be phased out by the end of 2015. Uh, we've also identified a handful, probably about 25 cars, which are marked and have a working camera, but aren't in an operational uh, unit. In other words, they're not responding to 911 calls or typically pulling people over on traffic stops. So we're gonna move some of those cars around. That leaves us with a shortfall of about 150 cars. And out of those 150 cars, we're gonna begin in the very near future examining those cars and making a determination about how much life do they have left? How many more years of service are we likely gonna get from these cars? assuming that they can be safely used in a patrol capacity, which obviously we inspect the cars. Um, and those cars that we feel like have two to three years of life left, we're going to replace the camera with a new Panasonic unit, and those cars will return to service with an operational camera. Uh, the, the cars that we feel like don't have enough life left to uh, justify the uh, investment, and by the way, those cameras cost $5,500 a piece, we will not be putting new cameras in. Uh, what we are going to do is we're actively seeking now and we anticipate in the very near future uh, concluding a contract to have a custom contract employee work for us probably for about a year and he's going to begin removing cameras that we know do not operate from cars that uh, have malfunctioning cameras and then begin pooling those parts together in an effort to hopefully repair some of the other existing cameras so by the end of 2015 we hope to close the gap from about our 70% now, much closer to uh, 85, maybe 90%. Now, having said that, we recognize that at the 20, end of 2015, we will not have every single cruiser with an operational camera by virtue of the fact we, we just can't be fiscally irresponsible and invest five or $6,000 into a car that probably is not worth itself five or $6,000. So um, we're trying to be fiscally responsible at the same time while uh, covering our patrol activities, covering the officers who are doing these patrol activities and them using the camera. So um, that's the broad overview. Hopefully I've answered most of your questions already, but I'm happy to take questions and I should have introduced him at the beginning, I apologize. This is Mr. Allen Lee, he's our chief information officer. He's sort of the go-to guy for anything technology related on the department. If you have some specific questions, he'd be happy to answer too. But uh, at this time, I'd be happy to take any questions. Um, of the 300 cars that don't have an operational camera, are they all custom cameras? No, 278 of the about 317 cars are custom cameras. So obviously the bulk, basically half of the, about half of the fleet has custom cameras, about half have Panasonic. About half of the custom cameras that we have installed are have some level of malfunction. Again, it doesn't mean they're completely not operational, it just means they have some level of malfunction. So those are really the ones we're talking about. Anything that's Panasonic based continues to be under warranty or under contract and will be repaired. In fact, Many of the 39 that I've already mentioned to you, uh, well, maybe I didn't, 39 out of the approximately 500 uh, Panasonic cameras exhibited some level of error. A bulk of those have already been reviewed by the uh, repair shop. Some of them have been repaired. Some of them have had parts ordered. But we are 100% confident, confident that every Panasonic will be working uh, by the end of 2015. That's, for our purposes, that's not an issue. Really, we're focusing on the custom-related cameras. And is 
that that you can't just take a, a Panasonic camera from another car and install it and replace it as a custom camera? Well, that's, that's actually a, a really good point. The, the problem is, is that the technology just doesn't, it doesn't mesh. Um, the customs are all DVD based and the Panasonics are all linked to a computer and they're storing the video on a hard drive. So it's not, it's not as simple as, oh, I can just rip out one part of the Panasonic and put it in the custom. It's just not compatible. So then what you're saying is when you decide that you're going to get new cars, they have to come with the, with the, with the Panasonic. Correct. And, and all the new cars we're purchasing will all come with new Panasonic units. And what's the life of a Panasonic camera and, and, and as far as their reliability? They've been very reliable for us. Again, it's my understanding, and uh, Mr. Lee might correct me in a moment, they carry three-year warranties as well. Uh, but we, we have a mobile technology center which actually falls under our Office of Homeland Security. That's the County Office of Homeland Security. They're the, actually the ones that manage these contracts. Uh, they're able to repair these Panasonic units. So again, for our purposes, the Panasonics, certainly we're not happy to see any level of error, but when you're deploying upwards of uh, more than a thousand cameras, uh, th there's no uh, manufacturer who says who's going to guarantee some level of 100% uptime unless you're spending, you know, unless the county wants to write a blank check for a billion dollars. But well, we're trying to be smart, fiscally responsible. Um, the Panasonic's have been very good, and we have no doubt that all of our Panasonic units, the ones that are now exhibiting errors or anyone in the future, we know those can and will be repaired. When do you feel like you will be able to hit that point? Well, yeah, I, I think that by the end of 2016, uh, assuming um, we get an allotment of money for new cruisers in 2016, we would likely get, you know, probably approximately 100 new cruisers in 2016, which would allow us to phase 100 of these older cars out. That probably gets us close to, if not meeting, that 100% goal. Around what moment did you realize, did you realize that there were cars with cameras that weren't completely functional? I know you, you don't really know the exact date, but could you kind of just give me a yeah, well, again, I, I think, you know, the command staff was aware that um, there were some number of custom cameras, probably late into 2014 and certainly early 2015, that were just not repairable. Um, and so um, I don't want anyone here to think that somewhere along the line, someone in PGPD made some decision or that we failed, um, you know, that, that we just woke up two months ago and realized we had some issues. We were aware that we had issues. The reality, though, is, is that um, you know, if we have 278 custom cameras that are now not 100% operational, we just can't go out and say, well, we're going to replace 278 cameras. That would cost us about $15 million. Um, nobody in the county has a spare $15 million to just uh, move from one fund to another to compensate. We, we've got to do it in a fiscally responsible way. So that's really the primary driver of that audit, as I said. The chief needed to know how many cameras do we have that aren't working? What's the best plan forward that allows us to close the gap towards 100% and be, do so in a fiscally responsible way. And, and I'd also note that out of those thousand cameras, we have about 750 that work. That far exceeds the number of cameras in any other law enforcement agency across the Washington, Baltimore area. We're not aware of anybody who has anywhere close to the number of installed cameras we have. And obviously we have some that are currently malfunctioning, but even the functioning ones, we far exceed any other department in the area as far as the number of cameras that we're maintaining and operating. And, and the actual physical hardware is just a small part of the equation. You also then have to catalog and store and be able to retrieve that video at a later date. So it, it's not necessarily a, a turnkey easy solution where you just put a camera in a car and then you've solved it. It's, it's a relatively complex process. Can you uh, just talk about the 300? I know you just mentioned about the 700, it's a good number for you, but the 300, how does that affect um, patrolling and, and the work that you need to do 300 that aren't working? Right. Well, the reality is, is that the, the 700 plus that we have are working are covering the majority of our patrol officers who are engaged in patrol activities. Uh, now, obviously, we're here and I'm obviously talking about there are there are some shortfalls there. Uh, is there going to be a traffic stop today where an officer pulls someone over and his camera otherwise would be recording if it was working? Sure. Um, but again, it, for us, it's mostly a fiscal problem, and obviously we're, we're, we're working towards finding those solutions, and we've come up with some solutions which I feel very good about. Uh, you know, I think by the end of the year, we will have closed the gap, and I think a, a, 
the vast majority of our patrol related officers will have a camera that works in their car. Where does the investigation stand into the officer's death that kind of started this whole audit? Yeah, I asked about that yesterday. The uh, uh, There's really no update in regards to that investigation. I couldn't get clear a clear answer on if um, our Department of Special Operations has essentially closed that investigation. But to my knowledge, no new information has come to light. And certainly we're not, you know, to my knowledge, there was initial talk about us trying to find the car that we believe Officer Rubain was attempting to stop. There's no new information on that front that I'm aware of. That's got to be frustrating, though, for not only you guys, but for his family, that he could have been in a car that had a working camera, a and absolutely. now you don't have that evidence. The chief has said, and, and I will echo his comments, that when, it, when we find when, during the course of an investigation that we could have had video that otherwise would have been there, but, but for the fact that the camera was malfunctioning, nobody is, is as disappointed as we are. We are certainly as disappointed as the community. We want that video to be there. Um, th this is not a case of us trying to lower the number or diminish the number of cameras that we have in operation. Our goal has always been to have 100% of our patrol officers covered. Uh, for us, this really is a product of us using our cruisers longer than we originally anticipated, the cruisers themselves lasting longer than the life of the camera, putting us in a spot, and particularly with the technology crunch of them not making parts for the, most of the cameras that we're using, it just has put us in this spot where we find ourselves in a spot where we don't necessarily want to spend tens of thousands, maybe millions of dollars to replace cameras or put a camera in a car that we would then deadline in maybe a year or 18 months. So. Is there anything you all can do to kind of prevent this from happening again? Well, um, when I spoke with the chief yesterday, he, he could not have been more complimentary about the support of County Executive Baker. Uh, in previous administrations, and, and not to denigrate those previous in, uh, administrations, but certainly, and again, in the early 2000s, Prince George's County was definitely facing some uh, fiscal challenges. And so I think for a number of those years, we didn't get the money allocated to purchase new cruisers. So now, here we are in 2015, and we're sort of seeing the effects of those years um, where we otherwise would have gotten new cruisers and phased out some of these old ones that we have now. And really, by virtue of the fact that we're using these cars longer, that's put us in this position. So since um, County Executive Baker has been in office, he has provided funds. We've gotten about 100 new cars every, every single year. So um, as that continues and we continue to get new cars, we'll be replacing these old cars. I would anticipate, you know, in the years to come, we are not going to be in this position. Bill, can you explain how advantageous these cameras are um, in a way that the public would understand why they're so important? And what they do for you? Well, in, in, in one case, it's, it's an incredible uh, training tool. You know, oftentimes, uh, and I know everyone here has seen it and even the, uh, our community, where you see a YouTube video and an officer makes a traffic stop and then during the course of that traffic stop, uh, one or more uh, suspects emerge. Oftentimes there's a conflict with the officer. Sometimes the um, suspects fire at the officer. So um, certainly there are times where we encounter those kinds of situations and the video clearly shows um, how dangerous those encounters can be and, and the training division uses that as sort of a training tool but really um, holistically from a really big picture it allows us to say to the community and, and hopefully show the community hey um, our officers did the right thing here's the video to show that we did the right thing they encountered a motorist or a person on some sort of stop um, they, they did everything that they were supposed to they did so in a professional way um, maybe the person they're engaging with is violent or, in, you know, in other words uh, or in other ways acting inappropriately. We, the video obviously shows a completely unbiased, articulate picture of exactly what happened. Now, of course, there are always problems even when you have video. Sometimes the car is positioned in a way that the video camera, which is really facing straight forward, isn't at the optimal angle. Things happen sort of on frame or at the edge of the frame. Um, sometimes people are yelling or screaming in, in a distance away from the officer's microphone that it doesn't necessarily pick it up. So it's not perfect. It's certainly not infallible. And, and really, and I'm sure it's on your minds, um, in the not too distant future, this is part of the equation will be likely body worn cameras, uh, which we will be investigating. It's my understanding we're gonna start a pilot project for that, which will uh, be underway before the end of the year. Ultimately, it may be that the department decides in lieu of in-car cameras, which are relatively expensive, maybe the solution is to have every officer wear a body-worn camera. Now, um, I'm not an expert in that, and I would say to you there are a lot of issues surrounding body-worn cameras. 
every single police officer and every single police department that I know of or have talked to, they want body-worn cameras uh, as fast as they can possibly get them. But the reality is, is that there are um, so many legal issues that haven't, don't really have solid answers yet uh, regarding those cameras and the video that would be taken that it, it, put, it puts police departments specifically in a really tight bind about, you know, if I go into, uh, if I go into someone's home and I've got video and my video is on and inside the home I encounter a minor who may or may not be involved in some sort of criminal activity, well, historically we don't record and certainly don't make public stuff related to juveniles and their criminal history. So now, should I have that recording on or should I not have it on? Or what if I go into a public restaurant or a store? Is it okay for me to have that video on in a public space? Is everyone in the store or the restaurant under the impression that it's okay? For, what, if they, what if someone says, I don't want you to record? So there, there's some legal questions around there. And again, I'm not an expert, but it's just not as cut and dry as, well, of course they should have video. We want the video. We think it will, will be an, a dramatically incredible, huge, incredibly useful tool. But, the, but getting there and, and figuring out what the intricacies there are, that's, that's part of the um, process. Any more questions? Let's, can, we, can we transition to the uh, segue to the yeah, technology? Yeah. Now, I, I wasn't going to necessarily annotate. The car here to my right, your left, this is a custom-based, DVD-based system. There's actually a, we ripped one out. This is the, the parts for it here on the hood. But inside the car is an operational DVD-based system. This one here, my left, your right, this is a Panasonic-based hard drive system. Uh, you're more than welcome to go inside the car. We can turn the cameras on if you want to do that. Uh, in fact, there was even talk of maybe if, if anyone wants to ride around the block and, and watch it in action, we can try to facilitate that too. We have a spare car back here, which we'll try to get people through if you're interested in that. But um, anything you want to video here in regards to the car and the camera, and if you need some explanation, please come get me or uh, Mr. Lee will be happy to give you the uh, details. Anybody else have any questions? Law passed, or, or did the city council? I mean, I'm sorry, the county council uh, put this in into your general orders that you had to have cameras in the car. Or was this a decision made by the chief at that time to just go ahead and put these cameras in, and that it was just part of the policy of the department? It was just there's there's no mandate, uh, there's no county council policy, there's no state, there's no county anything. This is all self-imposed. Um, the chief and certainly the uh, command staff here recognize that this is a valuable tool. Uh, it, and we want to have 100% coverage, and obviously we're working towards that, but no, uh, as evidenced by the fact of a number of agencies across the state um, who don't have any cameras at all, uh, this, is all this is all of us, all Prince George's County Police Department saying, we think this is a valuable tool, we think there's um, value in this, and we're, we're trying to have 100% coverage. Thank you.